Hey everyone, this is Deborah at Craft Project Whiplash, and I thought I would show you my color catalog. This catalog is part of my larger catalog with all of my binders in it. I've seen, I've shown on another video. I've actually changed my uh, divider, so if it looks a little bit different, um, if you've been following my YouTube channel, you would see the details on how I go about making that whole um, catalog. I just wanted to give you a quick idea of my color catalog and where it sits on my desk and um, a little bit more close-up shot. So this is my whole entire catalog of every stamp, every tool that I have in my whole entire room. So I just pull it out of the little cubby that I keep it in and then I can go and flip and just look through whatever, all the different categories that I have. But basically what I wanted to show you is where I have my color, because that's what we're talking about today, is the color. So all the way in the back is where I have these last two binders, and that is where I keep all the color. This is just going to be a video on just the color portion. Um, I do it all in the rainbow order, so um, starting this book, I have two binders. Um, for just the color. So I've got red through blue in this one and then my other one has the violet through black, white, and then metallics at the end. Okay, so this is not that much different than the way a lot of people are doing their um, ink catalogs or color catalogs. Um, I got this idea originally from Jennifer McGuire. Uh, she uses the full 8.5 by 11 uh, coin pockets, but I wanted it to fit on my uh, craft catalog so I wanted to use a smaller uh, size so this is actually a six by eight and it has 12 slots in it two by two and um, I've got it on the uh, half size binders that you can get from anywhere staples or target um, I have taken the binder off the the actual cover off and um, these particular uh, pockets. I have several different brands. Uh, Simple Stories. I have some um, Daily Flash. It's the Daily Flash ones. I think that's October afternoon. Um, all of the holes are in a different place, so that doesn't really bother me. Um, but I just repunch them to match the uh, traditional half size binder. So I just put a bunch of them together. Use my little binder clips and then um, I punch it with my little uh, quarter inch hole with my um, mem We Are Memory Keepers uh, power punch here. Okay, so that's how I get that to work. And, um, and then there's the, the original holes that I could go back and use the original binder at some point if I wanted to. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through this really quickly and just show you how I've organized them in my book. Um, I want to do mine by type. Um, so at, when I first did this, I just did it from dark red to light red. Didn't matter what it was from glitter to Copics to distress markers. And then I realized that I don't work that way. I don't color that way. Um, I tend to use all of my Copics at one time and then I use all of my distress markers at one time, that sort of thing. So that's why I reorganize them a little bit and I'll show you what I did. I've started out with all of my Copics together and I just print out a little uh, for my label maker on the clear um, tape and I wrote Copics there. And every single coloring uh, type that I have, I try to leave a little room to grow because there's a lot more Copics in red that I have, that I don't have, sorry. Um, so I left a lot of room for those, okay? I'm using both sides, uh, by the way, but I'm leaving that for if I get more Copic markers. Okay, so then I move on into my craft paint. There's really no order on how I did this. I just did it. However, I didn't do it alphabetical or anything. I just, this is the order that I did it in. You could do it however you want to. Um, so I did, did craft paint next. So this is all my craft paints. I tried to do it light, uh, darkest to lightest, but as I've gone through um, and added new things in there, I don't always keep up with that, but I feel like I've if I've at least got them in the right department, then um, then I'm good. So uh, craft paint is here, and I left a little room to grow here. And then I move on to watercolors. Now my watercolors consist of artists' watercolors, 
um, watercolor pencils, uh, Stampin' Ups, Prismacolor, uh, Derwent. So I, I combine all those together as watercolor. Okay, and then I move on to glitter. Glitter to me is going to be stickles, um, distress stickles, uh, chunky glitter, fine glitter, even flocking if I have flocking, which I think I only have one. Okay, and it's all going to be by color. So these are all my reds. So then I've got my distress inks. Um, and if you'll notice when I do my labels, um, I will put on here um, if I have the marker. So I put an M on here for the marker and if I have the reinker. Uh, this particular one, Aged Mahogany, I don't have either one, the marker and the reinker for that. Um, I have a lot of markers, but not a whole lot of reinkers, so that's how I do that. And then I know what I have um, when I'm going and buying or ordering online. I can go through really quickly and see, do I have that? No, I don't have that. Okay, and now mist down here, that's going to include everything that you can spray. Smooch spray, dilution spray, if I had the distress spray, which I don't have any of, but if I did, I would put that under mist as well. Tattered angels, lindies, all that would be under mist for me. Now my category for um, wax and oil, that's going to be, um, I have wax crayons, I have um, artist oils and then I have uh, regular colored pencils that are not water soluble the Crayola praying just the cheaper uh, mar uh, water I mean the uh, colored pencils so that goes under that category for me and then I have my Stampin' Up most of them I have the markers and the reinkers for so I've um, noted it here and then I have a Faber-Castell section and this is going to be my big brush pens and my gelatos and then I have a section for chalk ink. And then I left myself some room because I do plan on getting some different uh, types of ink um, in the near future. Um, kind of looking at the Simon Says Stamp ink or maybe the Hero Arts. I haven't decided yet. But I'm le I left myself some room to grow. Okay. And to get a little bit more detailed on um, how I'm doing each of the labels, um, like Copic Marker, uh, it all has a color family, color family, a number, and the name of the color, and then whatever it is. This says Copic Sketch. If I had any chows, I would put Copic Chow, okay, which I don't. Um, I'm doing all my craft paint uh, as a Craft Smart brand. I have some Folk Art brand. I have some Martha Stewart brand, and I just note that at the bottom. And these are uh, all my craft paint. I've numbered in one, I started with one, and I'll do another video on how I organize my craft paint and why these numbers um, are on here like this. Okay, um, I have, uh, I have even have a space here for washi. I don't have a lot of washi, so rather than putting this in my rainbow section in my scrap rack, which I think a lot of people do, I just decided to go ahead and put it in here in my uh, coloring. Okay, so um, glitter, yeah, and then uh, left room, tried to leave room for growth so I don't have to constantly be moving these around because if I leave no space and then I go buy, you know, five or six things, then I have to, you know, move everything around. Also, um, I wanted to show you when it comes to my um, colored pencils um, doing a representation of every color that you have is a really great idea because not all pinks are the same obviously but this particular these two right here these are both Crayola um, c colored pencils well they're both named pink well you can see they're very different this is a little bit more salmon this is a little bit more um, true pink I guess and the pencils even look a little bit different so what I've done is I've just picked one, um, this one say for instance, and I would I punched out a little copy paper, um, I think a little 3 8 inch circle punch, wrote a number one, and then taped it on with cellophane tape, just to tape it on there, and then I just labeled this one one. So then I know if I want this particular pink and not this one, I can grab this one really fast. I don't have to you know try to figure out which one is which and the same with this one I put the two and it's the two and that's the exact color of this pencil and you'll find that sometimes with different especially if they're the cheaper um, brands um, they have the same names and they don't have numbers on them 
uh, some of the colors that you would color you would never think would be called <laughs> what it's called um, like this to me does not look like maroon whatsoever you know <laughs> that's more of a purple it's not maroon to me but that's what they call it another one is the gallery this is a really cheap uh, colored pencil that I bought at one time there's no name there's no number at all on any of them so I numbered them myself this one I numbered one and I just did the same thing I punched out the little circle and um, and that way I could identify which one that it was uh, one more thing is the uh, underwater color the Stampin Up pencils they do not identify their color pencils at all you get color choice up here and that's it so um, I've looked online trying to see um, if someone had deciphered which was which and um, so rather than worry about it I just number them I just did 1 through 24 and like this particular pink one um, I named it number 17 I did the same thing punched it out put it on the top and then it's just easy to to pull out whenever I want this color I know to look up Stampin Up pull it out of my Stampin Up pencils look for number 17 and that's the color okay so this is my two by two um, little swatch here this is uh, there's many different ways that you can do it this particular one I actually stamped on the little flower with my chalk ink uh, this is the newest ink that I've, I've recently got um, these other ones I have done the um, the little the little labels that you can buy the little round labels and I would just take a bunch of them put them on my craft sheet put them up on my craft sheet and then I would just either stamp them or just t if it was a marker I just color it and then I just peel it up and put it on my on my little square so you can do it that way um, it was a great way to do the glitter too because I could do um, you know put adhesive on the little dot put the glitter on there and then pick it up and put it on the little square so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I did this label okay um, and the main reason uh, like I said I wanted it to be uh, iPad friendly and um, and also if I mess up it's really easy just to pull this label back up and then put it on another card if I if I kind of booger this stamp up and um, if I get ink on it or I mess it up in any way I can uh, redo it real fast without having to um, trash the whole thing and and print out a whole new page so that's just the main reason why I'm doing this but I'm going to do a, a quick tutorial with the Avery app that you can get on your iPad and show you how I did these uh, little labels right here okay so I have my iPad on and uh, here is my Avery label app so we're gonna click on the Avery we're gonna go home that was an older one I was doing basically when you um, sign on or you download this app you just sign in and it says that welcome Deborah so I'm already signed in um, and we're gonna go to start a new project um, so if you already know what your number is on your labels it gives you the idea of the number on the actual label um, so if you know what that is you're gonna uh, put that in you can put that in as a quick search just type th those numbers in here or you can come down here and look through all the options um, if you click here view all you're gonna get all the different um, things that they do we're going to do return address label okay and the return address labels are all different so you need to make sure that you pick the one that you have I'm going to use this one 5167 I'm going to go up here to next okay there's other options um, you can explore this and see all the different options it lets you put little letters or little um, animals just different things that you can put on there to make them fancy if you want to I just want to do blank so I have blank and text only it's already highlighted uh, on the blank so we're going to go next okay here is our little return address label first thing that you're going to notice is um, if you look up here on this uh, these tabs up here you have edit all or you have edit one okay main thing is unless you want them all to be exactly the same you want to put on the edit one 
okay? Because edit all, say you wanted a whole sheet of your return address, say your actual name and your return address, you want them all the same, but most of this, what I'm doing, I don't want all the same, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and going to make my um, label. So first thing, we're gonna add a text box, super easy. Um, this is so, so user-friendly. Okay, so I'm gonna type in my color. I am actually, I got some new Versamagic chalk inks. So I'm gonna type in Versamagic chalk. Okay, I'm going to want to change the type, the font, I mean. Um, I use the I don't know how to say that, per, whatever. And I'm uh, gonna choose number 13, that's the size. So then I can move this up anywhere I want to on the label. I'm gonna put it down here on the bottom, just center it on the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna add another text box because I want the actual color. So I'm gonna type the color. And this one is going to be turquoise gem. Some of them are going to want to capitalize, so I like um, to capitalize, to use all lowercase on mine, some, if it, you'll notice up in here, some of them will want to change it, which I don't, um, I don't want it capitalized, so I'm going to click on that one, and it was Jim. Okay, I'm going to um, change the font again, and when you've recently used it, it's going to go to that one automatically. I'm gonna go to size 13 again, and I'm gonna, you, you have the option of putting it to the left, to the center, or to the right. So I want it in the upper right-hand corner, so I'm gonna put it to the right. And then I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. And then I'm happy with that, okay? Then I'm gonna add one more box, and this is gonna be the actual number. If it has a number, this is where this it's gonna be. And also, if you have, um, marker for that product or if you have a re-inker this is where I would put this those two things in this box so this one um, is labeled G this is the number 15 okay and then I'm going to leave that font the Arial font for the number I'm going to change the size and then I'm going to orient it to the left here and then I'm just going to move that over just like that. You could make the box smaller if you wanted to. Doesn't really bother me. So there, I have all of my box. That's all the information that I want to be on this label. Okay. And like I say, according to different the different things that you're using, if it's stamping up, you know, here I would have an M for marker and then an R for reinker if that's what I wanted to show. And and don't forget, this will do any kind of label. You could do full. Uh, two by four inch labels, any kind of label that Avery makes, this um, app will work for. Okay, so that is how we do that. So let's say we're going to preview and print. So we're ready to print. Um, okay, so yeah, I've only done three labels. You can do as many as you want to. Don't forget to occasionally go and save. So let's say we're gonna save this. You can save as many designs as you want to. Um, you can do the default name if you'd like, or you can uh, change up the label name. Okay, so it says my project is saved online. So we hit OK, and now we want to print. So it's going to create a PDF, so we're going to hit Open PDF. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, now we're in Safari, so we're gonna go up here to the top corner where this little icon is, so if you wanna mail things or print things. So we're gonna click on that. Okay, then we're going to scroll over to print. Hit print. And then there's my laser printer. It is wireless. That probably is important that you have one of those. So I'm gonna hit um, print. And of course, my printer has been low on toner for like eight months. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now here are my labels all printed out. So like I said, I only did uh, three this time so I could show you what I was doing. So, um, and any time that you print these, they never print this first row. Um, even if, uh, if you want to save your labels and you don't want to have to click through, because you can go through and say, I want to start my next label on number four. And then it will just start printing here, number four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, whatever. Um, there's several that I've used a few out of, you know, a few pages that I've used a few. So what, another thing you can do is just cut it anywhere if you use a bunch of these labels up in here and it won't print on this first uh, row right here so then it'll be just like one starting at one again so it's a great and see it's just a half a page so it's a great way to uh, to use these and not have to worry but see like over here I've used a bunch of these labels out of here so I will want to take my cutter and I can just cut it off like right here and um, it won't print that first row so these two won't get printed on but there's nothing here so it'll start its one, on one here so it's just a quick way to um, or a good way to save um, your labels so that you're not wasting a bunch okay now when it actually comes to making my labels I keep a little box it's just one of those little photo boxes of um, a bunch of two by two uh, cardstock already I and that was another thing I do use cardstock not copy paper um, I suppose you could use copy paper um, I, but I just use cheap and expensive uh, cardstock on these. Okay. Um, I keep a little pile of these in here. I keep my little circles, and I want to use the circles, a bunch of those. I use um, these square ones here for labeling uh, my craft paint. So that's another that's another story there. So I keep some of those in here, and then I keep my punch. And I also keep try to keep a little bit of. Um, it's the label, like the full sheet Avery, full sheet label. So if I'm doing something like Copics and I want to just, you know, draw a little square with or color with a little square, and then I can just punch out the circle afterwards. Um, so I have that as an option as well. So I keep that in here. So that's my little quick. So when I just go and buy, you know, two or three inks, um, I try to wait till I have a good, you know, five or six to make it worth um, me doing it. But um, I'll do them all at the same time, but I've got a, a little quick little um, box here that I keep all my materials in. Okay, and then how I do my swatches, um, if I'm not doing, if I'm doing these, oh, I can't get a hold of them. If I'm doing these, I'll just take my craft mat and I'll just take a couple out and then I'll color them on here and then I'll pick them up and put them on the, on the little two by two square. That's one way to do it, especially if you're doing something really messy like craft paint or um, glitter, anything like that. I would do it this way, okay? And then I already have my little three-quarter inch um, circles, and um, then I can just put them on the little two-by-two. Two. If I'm doing an ink, um, like I just did the uh, chalk ink, and I wanted to change it up a little bit and use a flower um, for my swatch. So... What I'm using is my MISTI. If you're not familiar with the MISTI, it's really great. It stands for Most Incredible Stamping Tool Invented, I believe is what it's called. But it is really super awesome. I use it for stamping. It's a great way to get a really good image multiple, like you could stamp something multiple times and get a really crisp image without having to um, guess with a clear block because I don't know how good you are at stamping, but me personally, if I don't get a good image the first time and then I try to go back and re-stamp it, it never lines up exact. So here's how I do it really quick. There are some videos out there on how to do swatches with this. So you can kind of YouTube that, Google that. But I take my two by two swatch. I put it right here in the corner. Okay, tight in that corner. And I'm just gonna take my stamp and put it, I want it kind of on the top two thirds so I have plenty of room for my swatch. I mean, uh, my label, I'm sorry. And then you close. I just close the missy. You do not have to do this. You can just take a, a clear block and stamp it. It's just really fast this way because it's really easy just to um, stamp this, take my wipe, clean it off, add more ink, close it, boom, boom, boom. And it's just a very quick assembly line thing. So just really quickly, I'm gonna take my chalk ink 
going to stamp up my stamp really well and then I'm going to make sure it's all the way in the corner. I'm going to stamp it, give it a little press and there you go. And if it didn't get it perfect, you could ink that up again and then stamp it again and it does a really great job. Okay, so I'm going to take my baby wipe, clean that off really well, take my second color, take that out. Chalk ink needs a little bit of time to dry, not a ton, but a little bit, about a minute or so. So just set that off to the side. I'm going to ink this really well again. I'm going to close this, give it a good press, kind of sticks a little bit, and it did a really great image. So if it didn't, I could just go in, stamp, ink it up again, Close it again and it'll be in the exact same spot every time, guaranteed. It is a wonderful tool for that. So there's the chalking. So I'm going to let those dry for a second, clean off my stamp. And this, you can, you never have to take this off till you're completely done. So it's really, really fast. So we'll get rid of our Misty. And then I have a little space here for my labels. So all I have to do is take off my label, line it up, and stick it on there. Just that easy. And you could do um, just a ton of these in no time at all with that great app. And you can sit in your living room on your couch and do all your labels and then send it to your printer and then you can sit up here and do all your stamping at one time. Um, usually what I would do is I'd put the labels on first and then go back and stamp. Um, but if you're prone to messing up like I can be sometimes, sometimes it's easier to go ahead and stamp it first um, and then put your little label on. So anyway, that is um, basically how I do my um, swatches. And this Avery app is really, really great. So you might want to give it a try. It's totally free. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to message me or leave a comment below um, and I will be happy to help.